Hey guys, ECRG here, and today we're going to do a video about workplace email etiquette. Hey guys, ECRG here, and today we're going to do a video about workplace email etiquette. Now, this is something that a lot of people may know already, but for those that don't know, the workplace is a professional environment. Email is usually a professional way of communicating. It's not like instant message. If you want to know about a more casual way of communicating, you can look at our instant message video. That should be our uh, most recent video or one of our most recent videos. Uh, and you, you really want to learn the difference between when you use email, when you use instant message. Instant message is for something that's very quick, doesn't need a whole lot of long explanation. You know, you may ask a quick question to your boss or something like that. And that's pretty much why you're going to use IM. Email, you may want to throw in a uh, chart. You may want to throw in an example, a picture or something. It may be a much larger and a longer uh, reason why you're contacting your boss or something like that or sending to somebody in general. Uh, more formal, usually, if you're going to be emailing a client. A lot of times, we, I mean, we we can't use I am typically with somebody outside of the company, but you would use I am to contact somebody out of the company or in the company to explain something. So email is for that. And so that, today we're going to do a tutorial on email and a way to get started for you guys. So today we're going to do an email about to our coworker, uh, Becky, and we're going to ask her about something. So, First of all, on the recipient, I'm just going to type Becky. This email isn't going to anybody, so we'll do we'll do an email. And today we're going to ask her about. I don't know, let's 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 do an email about the meeting minutes. So let's let's ask Becky if if it's okay if I do not turn the meeting minutes today. I instead uh, send them out to the team uh, the following day, and let's let's see what Becky says. So first of all, you're going to go come up here in the subject and you're going to write a good subject. So we'll just talk about uh, weekly meeting minutes. All right. So then here's here's where it gets good. You always put a, a subject in there if you're if you're writing a new email and a pertinent subject. And usually in the to line you always put the person that it is to and if you want a response from them and in the cc line that's where you put somebody where you just want to notify them they don't necessarily need a response but the two line is for someone to read it's definitely more important for you to follow emails or read emails that are directly to you so we'll do that so what i typically do for the uh introductory part of the message is hello becky uh I, that's just standard you some people say hello that's typically more formal some people can say hi and then a comma so either one I would say is fine um, those are pretty much the ones I see maybe even a dear Becky if you're gonna be writing like a, a long letter or something of that nature but typically I just stick to the standard hello Becky okay so I'm gonna come down here two spaces down and we're gonna we're asking her about the the meeting minutes, if I can submit them to her next week. So he, so hello Becky, and then we're gonna say something along the lines of. Uh, you usually, I submit the meeting minutes to you the same day after completion. Same day yeah, after complete after completion. However, I have to leave early and was wondering if it would be acceptable to submit them to you tomorrow morning by nine 
Yeah. All right. So I know I misspelled some things. Let's go ahead and get that ready just as a good example. Tomorrow. And then we need a question mark here. All right. So simple question. Normally you write more than this in the email, but this is just a simple question just to show you an example. So then typically, since this is a formal email, you want to say something like best wishes and say your name. So ECRG, uh, best wishes is a good one. Also, you can do kind regards. That's a good salutation there at the end. A lot of people use that one, or you can just use the simple thank you. Okay, so that's it for you know sending an email. Uh, you you're probably gonna have if, if this is a company email, you're probably gonna have a signature down here. So in that case, if you have a signature down there, you don't need to make your, make your own. You'll have an automatic signature there, which is better. It'll have your you know maybe if whatever the company has you put there, your email address, your contact information, so your phone number, your position, your title, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Maybe we'll do a tutorial on building a signature, uh, but it's it's usually pretty standard. Your company will have a format for you to follow, so that's usually not a big deal. Uh, but so we, we're going to send that to Becky. All right. So pretend that I sent that. All right. So then Becky responds. We'll just make pretend this reply it says reply there. Usually after someone replies, EC. RG. So, okay, so now in Becky's response, she can say hello perfectly fine, a little bit more formal. Uh, sometimes people respond with just the message. And now this, this depends a little on company culture. This depends on who it is. So if you're an entry level employee and you're typing a message, let's say Becky is a project director or director of some level and she she can respond to you with just this. That that is fine. That's acceptable. And she might say something like, thank you, Becky. She may respond. That's all she may say. That is fine. Or, you know, she might say something like, you know, a little bit more nicer, like that is not a problem. I can't wait to see them tomorrow. And that, that may be it. She may just say, Becky, that's that's all fine. Uh, so you got to keep in mind who you are responding to when you reply. Uh, if you're usually of equal, you can respond how you, how you like. Uh, you know, you just got to kind of depend on the culture. But the most formal way for it to say, for Becky to reply is, for her to say something like, hello, ECRG, that is not a problem. I can't wait to see them tomorrow. Uh, then she'll say something like, kind regards, Becky. So that's the most formal response Becky could have done. And, you know, I showed you, I showed you a minute ago what a less formal response would be. Okay. Now, that's typically what people do. As the, as the response goes back and forth. So let's say Becky responded with a question. Are you, let's just add it. Are you sure you don't need more time than that? Okay. So let's say Becky responds like this. Now, after the third thread, it is okay to make it a little bit more casual. You do not need to do the hello ECRG. You don't need to do all, all of this in there. You can if you want to, and you're never going to go wrong by doing that. But in terms of speed and just overall etiquette, you don't have to do that. So now you can say, yes, I am sure you will have them by 9 a.m. Thank you. ECRG. You can do something like that. That's what I would recommend if Becky is somebody who's your boss or 
or somebody higher up, not even necessarily your boss, because you're probably going to have a good relationship with your boss, but somebody who's way higher up, a few levels higher up, just to show a level of courtesy and respect to them, you typically edge on the side of formal unless you know otherwise. So that's that's a good rule of thumb is to edge on the side of formal unless you you don't have to or you can not be formal otherwise. So actually, this this is not to confuse you guys. This is to yeah to Becky, uh, and it, your your message may just say re or it may say re re because it's the third reply. So that's that's okay. Sometimes people just say this. Now, if it's if it's a higher level up, I would edge on the side of more formality. So I would say something like this. If it's a high, if it's someone who's higher up, like a project director or something like that. So that's pretty much it about email etiquette. Pretty simple. Most people know or have experience with email. They're teaching it to kids super young now. So it's not going to be something that uh, you're unfamiliar with probably once you get your first entry level job you're going to be sending a whole lot of emails once you get your first entry level job i know in clinical research we send a whole lot of emails uh so you definitely get a lot of practice with it and i noticed when i first started in the in the industry when i was receiving when i would be sending emails i would have to think really hard about what to say and now you know i've been in the industry a long time now it just comes out you know we send so many of them it, what my response just comes out don't really have to think about it it's almost it's almost like like almost just like talking like i know what to say now uh whereas you know if i if i speak spanish or something i've got to think really hard about my sentences in advance got to think about the conjugations etc it's not like that as you get more experience in email it may be like that at first but because you're sending so many you'll get better and better you'll get better at writing emails and you'll tend to know what to say when people say certain things just just based off of practice so there are some tips for you guys did a little short tutorial for you guys hope you enjoyed it if you have any other tips or any etiquette that you like to abide by please comment them down below as always you can email us at elite clinical group at gmail.com uh, for any inquiries you have want to do business together want to you know help help support these videos we can do advertising as well and if you want any resume reviews we can become part of that program as well all right guys that's it for the day take care new video coming soon Thank you.